sorry. My goodness. Uh, welcome to our February Commission meeting. Good to see everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. We'll go ahead and we have an exciting agenda. Good to see so many faces here today. I will go ahead and entertain a motion to approve the January 5th minutes as submitted. Motion to approve. All right, Commissioner Hansen, do I have a second? I'll second, Ben. All right, Commissioner Moraga, thank you. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Any, any no? Great. The minutes are accepted as submitted. Okay, are there any requests for continuance? Any non agenda public comment? Welcome, Commissioner Anderson. Welcome, Marshall. All right. Um, I feel like for the last three meetings, when I try to log on, it, it says like other meeting in progress or waiting for host to accept. So I've missed like three minutes votes in a row. Just want the record to reflect that I've been in attendance. Okay, thank you, Marshall. Sorry for any technical difficulties. <laughs> no worries. Great, great. I, I can't some... get in either, Marshall, so don't feel bad. <laughs> we're just trying to keep out the important people, but we're glad you're, we're glad you're here. I know I started right off the top at 1230. It was probably 1229. So y'all are on time. No worry. Good to see you. Okay. Good. Well, we just approved the minutes. And if there's no non-agenda public comment, we will move forward. Well, I don't see our friends on, on the link yet. Why don't we come back to the friends of the library report if that's okay? And why don't we move forward? with the foundation report. Lots of exciting things happening. Welcome, Charlie, and welcome, Patrick. Oh, wait, hold one moment. I see Ann McDonald. Let me, let me just check to see if that's okay. String play here. Let's see if Ann, good afternoon, welcome. Hi, Ann, how are you? Great, you're on mute, Ann. Um, would you be giving the Friends report today or will Joan, do you know, be giving the report? I the think Joan was gonna be here, so. Okay, excellent. Well, lovely and green, it's good to see you. I think what we'll do is we'll move forward with the, sorry, Patrick was just ready to go <laughs> with the Library Foundation report. Okay, Patrick. I was actually gonna say I saw Ann in the, in the waiting room. Okay. Um, so I would defer to wait for it, but um, I will get started. Good afternoon. It's good seeing everyone. Happy February. Um, a couple of updates. First, I wanted to mention that we did have a very strong, the foundation had a very strong year-end fundraising uh, season, and I just wanted to extend thank you and gratitude for each of you for all of your support. And then I also wanted to thank you also for your support for our State of the City uh, address uh, hosted watch party. Thank you, Joan and Wendy, uh, for joining me. And we had uh, we had a lot of of folks uh, come and join us at the top for our remarks and stuck stuck with us during the mayor's remarks, and uh, and got a lot of really good feedback from that. And uh, consequently, uh, leading to our uh, advocacy efforts, which has just started now. And again, thank you for that as well. Uh, our Libraries Transform SD Coalition, which is consisting of you all on the commission, the friends and the foundation. I uh, wanted to give a quick update. Um, the budget priority memos, as many of you saw, uh, were released by the IBA's office last Thursday or Friday for the first time unanimously all nine city council members have included the library in their budget priority memos. And I think that this really speaks volumes to your advocacy, lending your voice and your support um, to our library system. And I think that we are, we're excited. I don't think, I know we're excited to begin having conversations with each of our individual council members and sharing with them how important the library is and what this means to them. And I know that some of you will be joining us on those, uh, those visits. Right now we have, we're doing the postcard campaign again. Uh, right now we have mailed out 410 packets of postcards. Uh, advocacy toolkits, which includes 10 postcards, one for each of the nine council members and one for the mayor's office. So that means um, pretty soon there will be 4,000 postcards out there in circulation at City Hall um, from volunteers exclaiming their support for the library. And then finally, I wanted to give you a quick uh, ballot initiative update. I know I've shared this with several of you, uh, but there's some new faces on here. 
Uh, our ballot uh, libraries and parks for all uh, coalition, of course, which is San Diego Parks Foundation, Library Foundation, and the MEA have had uh, an opportunity to evaluate our current landscape with resources and timelines, of course, playing a role and really examine our goals with this measure. And we've determined that a measure like this deserves as much community input, buy-in and approval as can be. And therefore, knowing that a general election turns out significantly more voters than a midterm, we are moving our efforts to the 2024 election. The expense plans in this measure are tied, of course, to specifics in both the parks and the library master plans and creating more time to ensure that each community in San Diegan understands what those priorities are, how they affect their community and how this measure will support this is very important. For too long, as most of you know, many communities in San Diego have been waiting for these kinds of investments and ensuring that their voices are heard, engaged in the direction of this is gonna be key to successful passage of this measure. Um, libraries and parks are the answer to much of our quality of life issues and our ability to ensure that these neighborhood assets have the tools and resources to operate efficiently is very important. And so, you know, looking at this from a long-term perspective, our goal is to create a 30 year sustainable funding source for parks and libraries. So taking a little extra time to ensure that San Diegans have the information they need to make an informed choice uh, for their communities is in the long run, we feel very beneficial. Um, so I just wanted to thank you all. I've talked about this um, in various forms uh, with some of you for a few months now, and thank you all for your support. And that concludes my report. If you have any questions um, here now, and of course, I'm always around at any time to answer any questions you might have. Great report, Patrick. Thank you. And thank you to the foundation and the collaboration. A um, couple of things, just backing up to the advocacy, getting all those postcards out to people <laughs> is a big job. So thank you for getting those out. I'm very excited to have my postcards and to be sending those out. And then I think the move um, to the 2024 general election makes a lot of sense. I mean, we're going to do it. We're going to do it right. We're going to do it big. And so um, congratulations to everyone that's been a part of that, getting so that decision, um, that's really, really exciting. So um, thank you, Patrick. Um, thank you. Can, yeah, let's move back um, to the Friends Report. Hi, Joan, how are you? We just skipped and went around a little bit of reorganizing. We're glad to have you. Yeah, so, thank you. Know, you. It's proceed. good to be here. I had a harrying yeah. time getting into the meeting this time. Um, but the set, on my second try, they, you know, it, it accepted me as a panelist um, so I could speak. Um, the Friends of the San Diego Public Library is gearing up for the season of advocacy before us. And, you know, we're really pleased to be um, collaborating so closely once again with the foundation and the commission. We're really quite encouraged by some of the early news, including the recently released budget priority memos. And we're looking forward to working to achieving positive budget outcomes for our libraries. Um, following up on um, the good news that was shared in our report last night, um, very graciously, Ann McDonald agreed to fill in for me while I was um, traveling. Um, so we, we shared good news and honor um, about the 100th birthday of E.T. Perry, one of our long-term volunteers. And some of the recognition that he received included special proclamations from both his District 9 council member and the full city council, which proclaimed January 13th, 2022, E.T. Perry Day in the city of San Diego. In addition, um, the Friends Board, the Friends of the San Diego Public Library Board has voted to establish the E.T. Perry Centennial Chapter Award to honor E.T.'s passion for helping out so many of our smaller Friends chapters over the years with his treasurer expertise. This will be a grant awarded annually to assist Friends chapters, which are in transition or otherwise facing challenges serving their libraries. Um, we're still fleshing out some of the details of it. Um, moving on to our book sales, the online book sales do continue to bring in some income for the greater um, FSDPL, as well as um, a couple of our chapters. Um, Friends chapters have continued to hold 
both um, outdoor and indoor book sales and friends used bookstores are open at many branched libraries, but most are still on um, shortened schedules um, relative to their pre-pandemic um, staffing due to limited volunteer availability. Unfortunately, the greater FSDPL has not yet been able to resume monthly book sales due to a cascade of seemingly never ending challenges in our space on the lower level of the University Heights Branch Library. Um, most recently, yet another episode of significant flooding which occurred last week. Um, there, we have an estimated loss of income from the almost two years without these weekend long sales in excess of $100,000. Um, that's, you know, and that's money that would be going directly to support our libraries, most, most of it going to matching funds and some of it to support advocacy efforts. Um, the FSDPL board and the President's Advisory Council will meet next on February 12th. We're looking forward to welcoming Jennifer Jenkins, the newly appointed Deputy Director for Customer Experience. I just wanna say we've been working fairly closely with Jennifer over the past few weeks on a variety of issues and she has clearly hit the ground running. And that, that's all I have today, thank you. Great, Joan, thank you. Welcome back from your travels. And you know, thank you for also sharing about um, the loss of income. And, and to me, that really speaks um, to you know, the challenges of the last two years with the pandemic, but also to me, it speaks to the dedication of what the Friends provides. And so thank you continue, for continuing to pivot. And even with the, the limited hours um, that you're open at limited branches, um, it's still making an impact. So thank you, Joan, to all of the, all of the Friends. And, and you know what, it, it's so understandable if anyone's tried to get a Starbucks anytime in the past few weeks and everywhere is closed, unless you're inside Target, um, we still appreciate all the work that the Friends is doing. And it's really exciting about the uh, E.T. Perry grant too, fantastic. Thanks, Joan. Okay, well, let's move forward to the consent agenda then. And we'll go into our report on library construction projects. Hi, good afternoon. Can you come back to me, please? This is Raul Godinho, Deputy Director over Library Operations. Um, I do have an update, just need to gather the docs. Okay, no worries, Raul, we'll come back to you. Um, Misty, would you like to start? We'll come back to, to Raul. He's yeah, got lots of fun sure. stuff. He's making a big lead in here. I was so gonna say, cool. say, shame, 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 shame. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I did do a written director's report to you because we have a few things on the agenda, but there are a couple of things that I wanted to point out in that. And one is that the budget, after we did the budget presentation for you last month, we did submit those budget, um, the budget to Department of Finance. They decided not to accept the two reductions that we had put forward, which is great news <laughs> for us. Um, so, but it does look like we're just asking for a lot of stuff. Um, but so we did do, uh, we did try to come up with some efficiencies and, and look at some things that we could cut. And then they decided that they were too vital and, and did not want to accept those. So. Um, that's really good news for us. Also, um, the library master plan. So we're taking this back to public safety and livable neighborhoods on February 9th next week. We did and we were trying to um, go straight to council with this because we had already presented at public safety and livable neighborhoods in October. Uh, but President Pro Tem Montgomery Step wanted it to come back to her committee, which is great. Um, they, this is, it's really going to be pretty much the same presentation that we did before, um, uh, because there were no public comments or any feedback that significantly changed the report. As you all know, the, um, one of the reasons that we wanted to is, um, we really wanted to have some kind of formal process, uh, you know, recognizing this document and moving into phase two. So after speaking with the, um, our attorney liaison, he recommended that I bring to you all um, and ask you to make a motion to move forward with phase two of the master plan. You have already adopted phase one, 
um, but just for the formality um, for you to make a motion to uh, to move to phase two. Uh, Ms. T, would you like us to do that now? Because I can entertain a motion to move forward with phase. I will entertain a motion to move forward with phase two of the library master plan. Would anyone like to make that? I'll motion? second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> did someone? I'm sorry. Did, did you make, move? Sorry, I'm, Wendy. I'm, did you entertain? I'm entertaining, okay, I'm entertaining I'll the make, motion. I'll make the motion. Okay. Second. Sorry, muted myself. Thank you, Commissioner Hansen. Do I have a second? Second. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Anderson. All right. All in favor of moving forward with phase two of the library master plan, please say aye. Aye. Any nays? Any abstentions? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you, Misty. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. A <clears throat> um, couple of other things that I just want to bring to your attention also. We did have a security issue this morning at the Central Library. So we have, we have um, as you know, security has been one of the things that we're dealing with um, consistently. Uh, we have uh, really made progress on incidents within the library. Unfortunately, we still have a lot of incidents on the outside of the library and around in the neighborhood. Um, we're having really a lot of trouble moving. Um, we have a lot of homeless that are spending the night around the building, um, kind of hanging out all day. We're having a really a hard time moving them along. PD is understaffed, as you know, and so are unable to provide us as much assistance as they had in the past. I do have a meeting with them on Monday um, to discuss kind of the growing issue that we're having. Um, I am nervous about the cleanup of the sports arena area and then that's going to they're going we're going to have a big influx of more people here so I want to get ahead of it and get a handle on this but this morning we had two fires <clears throat> on the park boulevard side and we had um, two overdoses one resulted in a death outside um, the loading dock so it did happen at about 6 30 this morning um, luckily before the majority of staff um, got here uh, but um, it's just something that we're seeing throughout San Diego and we're not um, immune to it, unfortunately. Um, it's very frustrating. So I will keep you posted, but I have a, like I said, I have a meeting Monday um, with homeless strategies, with neighborhood policing and with the central division of, of San Diego police um, to really talk about we've, we've got to do something um, it's, it's becoming very, it's becoming unacceptable um, around and we have a high school here and I can't allow for people just to be, you know, sitting around the building. So um, I appreciate all of your continued support with that. And like I said, I'll, I'll keep you updated on that conversation and what we're doing um, moving forward. So um, also, it is with very sad news that I say that Elizabeth Fitzsimons is going to be terming off of the board. Um, her replacement has been identified. Uh, her name is Shauna Hookheld. She is with Student Affairs at UCSD. She has not been confirmed yet. So, Elizabeth, you are not off the hook just yet. Uh, it will probably be a couple of months before you're actually officially termed off. Uh, but I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank you um, for your years of support and for being such an advocate for us. It has been an absolute pleasure and privilege to work with you. And I hope that um, you will stay around with us and continue to, uh, to partner and collaborate. Oh, my gosh. Of course, Misty. I am. Um... I'm always here to support you and your incredible team. Thank you for your leadership. You, um, I, I just have been um, such an admirer of yours and a big supporter of all the work that you're doing. And thanks to Wendy and, and my fellow commissioners for supporting the library um, so beautifully. This has been a really fun um, experience for me and it's really close to my heart. So thank you for, 
for welcoming me and, and let, letting me be part of all of the incredible work that you're doing here. Thank you. Thank you. To echo Misty's comments, we kept saying, no, no, say it ain't so. How, do, how is your term ending? How can we extend it? Uh, but really, thank you, Elizabeth. You've been absolutely a pleasure to know and work with. And every time I've had an opportunity to work with you, we're so grateful um, that you took time out of your very, very, very busy schedule uh, back when you were at the chamber and now running a major organization uh, to be on the commission and to serve the library and the community. And as Misty said, she hasn't been confirmed, so not off the hook. Uh, but we're already we're already missing you and you haven't left, but we really do thank you and acknowledge your, your leadership in the community and we're happy to have a, a portion of that for our library. So we, we will enjoy our last few months of working with you and um, such a pleasure, such a pleasure. So bravo yeah, to bravo. Sergeant Simons. And I am happy to announce that Ben Moraga has been reappointed to another term um, to the board. Ben, I do need to check in with the boards and commissions because they put that your term ends March, <laughs> March of 2022. So I don't know why they would have only reappointed you for three months. So I need to check in on that. But um, I do thank you for your uh, continued service and for, for staying with us a little bit longer. So thank you. That's longer tomorrow. than four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you to Commissioner Moraga. That's really exciting news for us. Thank you for saying yes to the reappointment. Really great news. We only want great. We only want great news. And Miss Eli, just, just let me just take a moment also to acknowledge um, prior um, to the the fires and the overdose. And I'm I'm sorry for that person and the community and the situation. And um, sorry that the staff and you know, our first responders and to the family of the deceased, but had to deal with that because again, as we know, there's so much more that libraries and staff are doing in addition to running a library, but um, good work with moving forward immediately to get a meeting on Monday with our partners on how we continue to battle this uphill challenge. And I do think um, we've all seen in the news, you know, the, the challenges for the unhoused in many levels and you know the cleanup of uh, sports arena and where those unhoused and unsheltered individuals will go because that's obviously you can clean it up, but it doesn't solve the problem overnight. So I'm just I'm I'm just feeling I'm sorry. It's a diff it's a very difficult situation. And again, thank you for moving forward so quickly um, to come up with continued strategy and game plan because that's that's tough work, folks. That's really 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 tough work. So thank you to you and your staff and. Um, everyone in the community that's working on this. Can I speak to that point, Wendy? Yeah, I was waiting for you, Marshall. I'm like, come on. <laughs> I want to cloud yes. all the, the Yes, the yes, but, um, absolutely. No, I mean, it's just, you know, we've been having these meetings and, and talking about the issue for so long and throwing literally billions of dollars at this. And yet the partnership is reporting their highest unhoused counts since 2016. So the problem is getting worse. In Midway, we had, what, 183 individuals, only seven accepted beds. So maybe the current way of doing things isn't working. I know the Committee on Downtown Homelessness next week is meeting to discuss uh, a set of recommendations they're making to the city and the county. If that letter passes, perhaps we should bring that to this body to sign on to at a future meeting. Marshall, is that meeting open to the public? It's by invitation, but I, I think it would probably be helpful if you were there. I'm happy to, to reach out to the partnership and, and see if we can get you an invite. Okay, thank you. I'd appreciate that. Okay. Thank you, Marshall. That's a great suggestion. Yeah, I think everyone is really, um, I don't even know, the, it's beyond frustration. It's sadness. It's frustration. It's anger. It's, yeah. But thank you. That's a great um Thank you for sharing about that meeting. It would be great if Misty is able to participate. Okay. Um, and Misty, do you want to keep going or are we back to Raul? We're back to Raul. Yeah. Back All to right. Raul. Back to you, Raul. You got to make a Thank big you. difference. Thank you so much for uh, coming back. I, I wanted to make sure I got a date um, for the Pacific Highlands Ranch Branch Library. Um, so this project, uh, when we spoke last time um, or in last month's update, um, it had been in re-advertisement. Um, so now that bid opening date was extended until today, February 2nd, um, as some of the bidders were not able to access all of the contract documents. 
Um, so, so that has been fixed now, which means that groundbreaking um, has been pushed back. Um, and right now it is anticipated to be sometime in July, August of 2022. Um, and assuming that there are no more bid protests or any other delays um, with construction being estimated at around 18 months, this puts us uh, for opening sometime in fiscal year 24. And again, this is for the Pacific Highlands Branch Branch Library. Um, so at least we, we, we're, it looks like we're, we're past um, some of the e-contracting issues. Uh, the Scripps Miramar Ranch Library parking lot, uh, that parking lot um, is, is, or that project is an expansion. Um, and in previous month's updates, uh, the consultant was, uh, had applied for the building permit uh, to, for construction. Now, uh, we, we anticipate that this month in February, that permit is um, obtained by, by the consultant. Um, so that would clear um, some of the ADA and some of the stormwater uh, uh, issues that we wanted to get cleared. Um, so moving forward with that e-contract process. Um, one other update, the Ocean Beach expansion, um, we had mentioned in, in, in uh, previous months that there was a community workshop um, and we, we met with the uh, planning board uh, and we are working on community workshop plans and in the best interest of, of health and safety of the community, it was recommended that we reschedule this month's um, community input process for next month. And what we are doing is we're working on a hybrid version uh, to gather community input for that Ocean Beach expansion um, so we're, we're, we're working with engineering and capital projects uh, to do that. And we are uh, keeping the council district apprised in the mayor's office and we're moving forward. Those are the updates. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Raul. So much going on. Great to have your leadership helping to oversee all of those many, many, many details. Exciting. Thank you so much. Okay. Misty, back to you. Got some fun things on the agenda today. Yes, we do. We have lots of fun. Um, we have fun things for you today. So the first thing that we have is Emily Derry. Emily is our um, youth and engagement coordinator. And so she is going to talk to you about my first library card that we have just launched. So Emily. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's nice to be back. Thank you, Misty. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. I have a fun PowerPoint for you all. Okay. Gets. Can you see that okay? Yeah, okay. So on January 18th, uh, the library introduced a new program for our youngest library users, My First Library Card. Um, my first library card encourages parents to set their children up to be readers for life by getting them their first library card at a young age. So as you all know, literacy is important for all stages of childhood development, including infancy. And children who are read to uh, will remember more words and sounds than those who are not. And studies show such reading will improve future literacy. So we all know that, right? <laughs> In an effort to remove as many barriers to access as possible, we wanted to create a program that made it clear uh, to parents and guardians that babies and the youngest library patrons can get cards too. So there is a misconception that only adults can get library cards. And this initiative will help clear up that confusion in a super fun and engaging way. So in my first library card, babies and children ages zero to five receive their very own specially branded My First Library card. And as you can see from the picture, the library card features Odie the Coyote. Odie was introduced to us all last spring in the library's first children's book, Odie's Library Day, that you can see there. Um, and in case you have, if and there's anybody here that hasn't heard yet, ODI, OD stands for the library's vision for the place for opportunity, discovery, and inspiration. 
So when young children come in to get their library card, they are met with excited staff members who issue them their OD card, give them their own copy of Odie's Library Day. And then while supplies last, we've had these OD plush uh, to give away. And I think many libraries are out already, but um, we might still have a few left for folks. Uh, they've been very popular, as you can imagine. And along with those goodies, along with those goodies, here, let me go to the next slide. Uh, staff give ch the child the opportunity to take a picture in the My First Library Card selfie frame um, and ask the parents to post the picture to social media with hashtag MySDPL. And we've received a flurry of cuteness our way on social media. Um, for example, here is our very own Raul Gudinho uh, with his sweet daughter Remy getting her first library card. Aww. <laughs> um, and then another important component of this program is to complement the library's 1,000 books before kindergarten program. Um, in this program launched in 2017, parents and caregivers are encouraged to read 1,000 books before their child reaches kindergarten by tracking the reading online or on a paper log. So this little guy got their certificate. So they had read 1,000 books with their, with, um, their parent or guardian. Um, and so they're looking pretty proud there. Um, let's see here, next slide. Oh, and I also wanna say uh, too, that um, our original goal, this is the this is a really exciting part. Our original goal was that by spreading the message that our youngest patrons can get their own library card, um, that we would double the amount of libraries cards issued to this age group next year. So in fiscal year 2020, we issued 762 cards to this age group in the full year. And in the short two weeks that we've had been running my first library card, we have issued 995. So we've already exceeded in two weeks what we did in an entire year. Um, so doing this will certainly increase the number of books checked out for these young readers and families will be more engaged with the library by participating in 1000 books, uh, coming to weekly story times and other fam uh, special events for families. So I'm gonna leave you with a few more, uh, oops, I gotta go back. I went too fast. A few more cute pictures. I'm sure there's no objections, but here are some friends getting some library cards. Um, and then we have a friend in the back. Who's this? You, <laughs> you all see Odie the coyote behind me? <laughs> so we just recently got a mascot for the library, Odie the coyote. And they are visiting me now. <laughs> Yay, Odie. So that pretty much does it for my presentation. Thank you, Odie. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so cute. That was cuteness overload. And we thought we thought Raul was cute, but his daughter's even cuter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Raul, just scoot on over, friend. Um, <laughs> great presentation, Emily, and congratulations really on those just stunning, stunning numbers, which again, just speaks to, you know, great outreach efforts, but also just great desire uh, for people to access the library. But that was a lot of fun. Thank you for that. Okay, if you ever need cuteness overload and a cute PowerPoint, uh, let's talk to Emily. Yeah. <laughs> We needed had a lot some of fun help. today, of so that's really, that's yeah. huge. And, I think the uh, most fun part about this thank program. You. Yeah, thank you. Thank awesome. you. Commissioner Moraga had a great suggestion he put in the chat. Um, I don't know if y'all had a chance to see that, but he was mentioning. Well, go ahead, Ben, I'll let you share it. <laughs> uh, sure, I just, first, uh, great program. Congratulations on the results. It's so important for, for kids to start reading at the youngest age possible. So, and as you say, be lifelong readers. Um, it sounds like there's a potential great opportunity to partner with, with local healthcare systems that, uh, you know, in their maternity uh, wards, to give these out. Um, I'd be happy to facilitate an introduction to the folks at Sharp Mary Birch and see if we can um, make something happen there. That sounds like a great opportunity. Thank you, Ben. Definitely sure. reach out. Thank you, Ben. That is exactly kind of what when we first envisioned when we did this was to have, you know, when when you know children are born is to be able for them to get a library card like right after they're born, right? So we want them leaving the hospital with the library card. So that would be awesome. 
Yeah, they leave with a with a packet of things anyway from the hospital. So if, if the library could provide those cards and uh, you know some sort of introductory letter, however it works out, I can't speak for the hospital, but I'm I'm sure they'd be open to the conversation. Wonderful, and thank you, Commissioner Fitzsimons. Put in the chat, she'd love to connect uh, to get some connections with their Head Start kids. So really, some great opportunities here. Uh, that's a great suggestion, and I just say thank you to Odie. Uh, we all want to know who's who's in the ODI suit. <laughs> Steve Hermes, our foundation board chair, was saying, oh, we'd love to have ODI at a foundation board meeting. Um, really, really great. That person in there is probably like, I'm hot and I want lunch and get me out. I have to go to the bathroom. But <laughs> great presentation. Even adults like furry creatures in outfits. Um, fun, really fun. Great job, Emily. Thank you so much um, for your program and presentation. Oh, it's going to be hard. Who wants to go after that? That's I was going to say, it's going to be hard to follow, but <laughs> <laughs> back to you, Ms. I've got, so we've been doing a lot of work um, on our audio visual. And one of the things that we noticed about the Neil Morgan Auditorium is when you try to show movies or you try to do things on the screen, there was a lot of glare because you there's sun coming in from the courtyard. And so you know, we wanted to kind of move into the 21st century with that technology. It's a beautiful space. So we've been doing some improvements. Um, and Curtis Williams, who is our um, technology resources manager, is just going to give you kind of a brief update on what we've been doing in Neil Morgan. Curtis. Sorry about that, needed to unmute myself. Uh, can you all see my screen? Perfect. Thanks, Misty, uh, for allowing me to go after that presentation. Um, I'm gonna apologize ahead of time. I do not have any props. I'm gonna try to keep this, this kind of short and sweet. But as Misty said, we've been doing a lot of uh, improvements in Neil Morgan. Um, and I just wanna share some of those improvements with you. Um, we kind of started this process back in 2020, fall of 2020. Um, the library has a contract with an audiovisual uh, integrator. Um, we, uh, that integrator is ABI Systems. Um, obviously, Neil Morgan Auditorium is one of our marquee spaces that, that brings on signature attractions uh, in a normal year. I mean, obviously, last couple of years, we've had the pandemic kind of uh, throw a little bit of a wrench in that, but uh, we're back on track now. We started the work uh, the late December of 2020. Some of the highlights of the project. Um, this was definitely a CIP project. However, we did not conduct it in the same kind of fashion. We were able to work with ABI Systems. They've managed this whole project from start to finish. That includes everything from the architectural design, electrical work, um, the electrical work was done by the city electricians. However, they coordinated those efforts, um, just kind of locating where the electrical panels and such need to go. And also we had a contract with a third party to actually demo, because as you can see in these photos here, there's acoustical paneling that needed to come down. Um, that unfortunately was creating problems when you try to do photo, um, take pictures of folks on stage, it was creating a glare. Um, so we've had those panels removed to make room for the for the LED wall. It's about a 16 foot by nine foot 4K display. Um, we're installing two new Bose speakers and the estimated time frame for this entire project is about, about eight weeks. It's one of the milestones just kind of showing here the demo of the wall. As you can see, the panels coming down, being stored, and then the, the far right um, with all the panels kind of removed from where the LED wall is going to be installed. Preparing the wall. So here's uh, some of the patchwork that took place. Because this equipment, uh, it's so heavy, we had to reinforce the wall. So that's where you see the plywood, uh, ply, plyboard back, plywood backboard, excuse me. Um, installed here. Um, that's to to hold that weight because we're we're looking at about a thousand pounds of equipment being um, attached to that wall. There's just a couple photos of the actual installation. 
the first one here. These panels come configured, what they call a six by six kind of configuration. Um, this is one, once it's all put together as one panel. And then the middle photo is actually an electrician here, uh, wiring up the outlets for the panels. And then the last picture on the right is the finished product. Uh, there's still work that needs to be done um, with finish, finalizing the space. Yeah, they're, still, they're gonna paint the wall there. Um, it's, it's gonna be nice, nice and neat once everything is done. And this last one, we're in the programming stage right now. The two photos on the left and right, um, if you can see that, those are the new speakers, the Bose speakers that, are, that have been installed. And then in the middle is, I happened to catch them while they were kind of the initial programming of the wall. So that's not what it's gonna look like. Just wanna make sure I put that out there. It's gonna be nice and, nice and um, bright when it's all done. Kind of put this uh, in perspective, the size of the wall, if you've been to the central library, there is a kind of on the first floor off of the parking, public parking elevator, there's a display there. This is roughly four times the size of that display. I mentioned this earlier, to be continued, there's still work to be done. Um, this photo is kind of timely because it shows we're, we're actually going to install some theatrical style curtains to kind of finish off the, pro the project. It's going to provide protection for the LED wall when it's not in use, but it's also going to provide acoustics. As, as I mentioned before, we removed some of the acoustical paneling. This is going to restore some of that. That's the end of my presentation there if there's any questions about the work that we've done thus far otherwise I'll allow us to go back to our agenda awesome thank you Curtis what it, you know, it really makes you appreciate all the behind the scenes you know when you walk into a beautiful theater and Morgan is certainly a stunning stunning place thank you to uh, the late Neil Morgan and Judith um, beautiful but thank you Curtis for your expertise because for those of us that just walk in you know and it looks great um, Thank you. Awesome, positive, and exciting. So good stuff. Any questions for Curtis? Even though no furry animals, that was a great presentation. Okay. <laughs> it's tough like when you're following furry animals. cute babies and furry stuffed furries. Uh, nice job, Curtis. Thank you so much. I will just add, and it, it kind of pertains to this next presentation as well, that we were able to use PEG funding for this. So we used the, um, which is the cable franchise fees. And the library has really become one of the major, you know, um, recipients of this funding because of all of the things that we're doing for the public. So we're really fortunate to, to have that available and we're trying to put it to very good use um, and get our share. Um, every day, which goes into the next presentation. So Oscar Gittemeyer, who is our um, program manager for innovation and community engagement. And with him, he's got Cameron and Larry from Media Arts Center and Diego from Media Arts Center are here. Um, and they're gonna tell you what has been going on at the City Heights Performance Annex. All right. So just to give some folks a little bit of background, if you're not familiar with the with the space, this is an aerial view. So you can see the black box right here is number one, which opens up to the amphitheater, which rolls into the park. And then the largest building here, number four, is the City Heights Library. And just to the right of that is the new Idea Lab with the production studio in it. And then just north of that is the town council space. And then to the right of that is the Head Start. So that's sort of an aerial view. So you'll know where each of these spaces are as we go through the slides. Uh, and another just a little bit of background. This was initially uh, created in November of 1998, this space. And it was a public-private partnership between Price Charities and the city. And City Heights is just one of the most culturally diverse neighborhoods in the city. Uh, this all began with a business plan that was done by the Arts at Work in March of 2021. And what this business plan looks at are what the resources are that already exist in the community. And then also what are some of the facility needs in the Black Box and the Idea Lab specifically. 
And what could those potential resident operators look like? Like who in the community could help us run a production studio in a black box theater? And then we also have an arts management associate position, which will be onboarding soon. And that person is just helping to coordinate all of those spaces and to engage with the community. And so some of our future funding we're looking at is the California State Library Grant. It's called the Building Forward Grant. And we did a $5 million request for some ADA enhancements, some sustainability upgrades, and some building expansions. And if all goes well, we hope to expend receive and expend all of these funds by June of 2026. Um, this is inside the Black Box Theater and I hope Media Arts doesn't mind. I stole, I snapped a photo during one of their recent teen film showcases. And so that's actually, I believe Larry there at the front. Um, so that's one of the uses of our black box currently, but you can see the projector there. It's not, you know, as bright as we'd like it to be. The screen is pretty small. Some of the lighting isn't as advanced as we would like it to be. The curtains need up updating that kind of thing. Directly behind that projection screen, you'll see is the outdoor roll up and the photo to the right, that's where the black box then opens up to the rest of the park there. And that's our ADA team doing a site evaluation for our ADA upgrades. Um, and there's currently no resident operator for the Black Box Theater, but we do have a resident operator, Media Arts, who's here with us today to talk about the neighborhood production studio. Um, this is like an aerial view of the different spaces within the Idea Lab. So the empty black box all the way to the left, that's the town council. And so what we did was we added a wall dividing the town council from the rest of the Idea Lab and then also created um, a wall here to block out this window so we could do a large wall mounted monitor there. Um, the teal box is like a little teaching area with some new tables. We also put like a reception desk in this front area, like a welcome reception desk. And then the rest of these spaces are sort of fluid right now with COVID. We have several tables and computers throughout that space right now. Um, so this is the idea lab before construction. So as you can see on the left there, there's no wall dividing the town council from the idea lab. And there's also that large window there with the blinds. So we've covered up that window. And then to the right there, you can see it's sort of large, bulky furniture, some outdated colors. And so this is the construction of the idea lab here. Um, you can see the construction going in. This is Ewan Tran here in the middle. This is the branch manager at our City Heights Library. She was having some fun. She was not actually building the tables, um, but just having some fun checking out the construction. And then down below there, these are day use lockers. So as folks come into that space, if they have purses or backpacks that they want to lock up for the day, those are our day use lockers. And this is the current idea lab here. So this is the new furniture, lighter, brighter, mobile furniture. All the tables and chairs have wheels. So the space can be reconfigured depending on the types of programming that's happening there. And then you can also see the front reception desk here is now ADA compliant. Uh, and just again, lighter, brighter colors. And then again, you see that back wall is filled in. We've covered that window so that we can place a large monitor there. And this is all of the brand new equipment that has come in. So this is filmmaking equipment, lighting kits, all of that. And so uh, Media Arts has done a great job so far of training their two current cohorts that they finished using their own equipment. But we're really excited to have this equipment in the lab now available for Media Arts. And then eventually this equipment will also be available for the public to actually check out and use this equipment. So we're very excited to have all of this equipment coming in. And um, I'm going to hand it over to Cameron and the rest of the Media Arts team so they can talk about the two cohorts of students that they have recently trained that we will then be onboarding to the city as interns here to help us with some of our filmmaking and storytelling. Thank you, Oscar. It was so helpful uh, for those of us that haven't been down or haven't been down in a while to see the layout and the pictures. And you can really get an idea of what it looks like and what, what it will become. So really very helpful. I know Misty has been telling us about it for a long time. So it's great to see it coming into fruition. Well, that was awesome. Thank you. And uh, wonderful. Thank you, Oscar. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you. Uh, wonderful to uh, join you all today. My name is Cameron Quevedo. I'm the Director of Education at the Media Arts Center. 
Uh, we're joined here today uh, by two of my colleagues. We have Larry, our education coordinator, Diego, who is one of our teaching artists in our uh, teaching artist program. A big shout out to Oscar, to Curtis, to everybody who's been uh, really, really working hard on the Idea Lab space. Uh, the task has been monumental, especially in the context of COVID with uh, supply chain issues, delays. So uh, big shout out and, and thank you guys for all of the, uh, the hard work there. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and uh, we will uh, take uh, just a couple minutes to talk about uh, this recent uh, program that we've been collaborating on, our Workforce Development Initiative. This has been a collaboration between the Media Arts Center and the San Diego Library System, uh, in addition to the city. So uh, we will uh, today take a, I'll, I'll be giving just kind of a, a rough overview of the program uh, and our different focus areas in the program. Uh, from there, I'll pass it to Larry, who will discuss uh, some of the statistical uh, and numbers, uh, metrics associated with the program. And then Diego, again, our teaching artist who worked uh, closely with our first cohort of WDI students, uh, will share some program results and hopefully a, a short clip. And then uh, I'll outline to, to finish up for today some steps forward uh, where we could see a program like this uh, going. So. Uh, this uh, first, uh, basically first year of the WDI program uh, was designed as a pilot year, uh, really to uh, see what the response was. So uh, this is a program that started roughly uh, in September, October of this past year and will continue running through June uh, 22. And our focus for this program has been under-resourced youth and low-income youth, uh, roughly from ages 16 to 24. In September and October, we had a, a very aggressive marketing campaign reaching out to uh, fellow organizations, folks working in education, uh, folks that we'd, we have worked with uh, in the past. This is the flyer that we sent out here. Um, one of the big, uh, I think, important elements uh, is that this is a paid work development training, which is uh, certainly a draw. We'll talk a little bit about uh, that in a sec. And, the program that we uh, have actually cooked up for this pilot year is broken into two phases. So phase one, the students through a six-week arts boot camp uh, that has a stipend associated with it. So the students are getting uh, workforce-centered media arts training. So asking the question, uh, if you were interested in getting a job in a media arts-related field, field, what is the foundational knowledge that uh, you would need to know? Part two, uh, this is where uh, the city and the library system comes in in terms of the internships. There's a three month paid internship, uh, either within a city department or within the library system. Okay, and as I've mentioned, uh, we've had two cohorts thus far. Cohort one ran from November through December for the six week portion. They're now beginning their uh, paid internships. And cohort two actually just wrapped um, uh, just a couple of days ago, last week actually. So they ran from December uh, through February over the holiday. Uh, so now I'd like to pass the mic over to uh, my colleague, Larry, who's gonna discuss uh, the program statistics. Awesome. Hi, my name Thank is Larry. You, and I've had... Welcome, Larry. Thank you, Cameron. Thank you. I am Larry. I've had a San Diego library card since I was in elementary school. And so I'm happy to be partnering with the library. It's really helped us revive our community outreach as Cameron mentioned earlier, we did a very robust marketing campaign. And in doing that, we had 162 applications that were sent in. And so we can only select 30. So we had to have a very rigorous selection process where you know, we had to turn away people who were alumni of our program, people who were kind of you know really, really eager to get involved, but either had already had experience with media arts or were for more higher socioeconomic statuses. And so we decided to prioritize in keeping with the intent of the program to prioritize low income households, uh, young people who are perhaps not really engaged with school, who are talented and motivated, but perhaps don't have the opportunities to gain these kind of job skills. And so we, brought them into the cohort, we gave them the boot camp, and we these applications came from all over the county, as far south as San, San Ysidro, as far north as Vista, all the way out to El Cajon and Santee. And so the 30 that we accepted into our two cohorts, about a third of them come, came from the South Bay, 
which was a big success for us because we've always struggled to really connect with the South Bay. And so we had a third of them come from National City, Chula Vista, as far south as San Ysidro. We have a big significant number of youth from the mid city area, Emerald Hills, North Park and South Park. I mean, we have students who are from Pacific Beach and Claremont and Linda Vista as well, and East County. So we have young people from all over the county. So they're bringing with them a variety of experiences and perspectives. And so it's really helped us to bring all these young people together who what one thing that they have in common is, you know, lack of opportunity and that this program has been able to train them with technical skills and also provide them with soft skills such as conflict resolution and time management and important things like that. Great, thank you, Larry. Uh, now we'll pass the mic over to our teaching artist for the WDI program, Diego. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as I mentioned, or as Cameron just mentioned, um, I'm the teaching artist. I believe, you know, part of the reason I was selected for this role is because my experience is in uh, event videos and video production for nonprofits, um, along with some documentary work. Um, and, you know, that really comes down to like small teams and small budgets and making the most of it with that, which is, I think, what we're after for these students. So we set out to give them a crash course in documentary and event video production, um, giving them the basics of camera work, both on the artistic and technical side, um, and then also storytelling in terms of how to pace out a video and hold an audience's attention. <clears throat> um, and so the bottom line of this program, the final project was a community spotlight video. So this is literally exactly what it sounds like. You pick something in the community and you shine a spotlight on it. Um, during the last cohort, we had students work with um, a local cafe, the Dojo Cafe, and had them reflect on how gentrification has had both positive and negative impacts on their business. We had them work with a local um, Nazarene church um, on, on university right off of the 15 freeway. And then this time around, we had um, someone work with a skate park, and you'll see this uh, shortly when we show you the video excerpt. And they did a highly stylized video showing skating, but also reflecting with one of the skaters about their, you know, political efforts to secure funding for this skate park and its positive impacts um, on the community. And then <clears throat> the other thing is, as um, Larry was just mentioning, these students really do come from all over San Diego. And, you know, the result of that is, you know, very high level of diversity in this program. We have um, kids from, you know, uh, immigrants from Africa and from Latin America. We have um, kids who have, so yeah, just kids who are, who are underserved. And so of course it's a diverse community. And, you know, a huge part of, you know, pursuing any sort of artistic career is having peers that you can reflect your, on your work with. And I, I was really happy to see how this group of students, how the two groups of students we've had so far were able to really connect with each other and just have a good time in the environment. I think they started coming for the stipend, but by the end, I think they were addicted. Yeah. Um, and so with no further ado, Cameron will be showing you a excerpt from one of their videos. Um, and I already intro this one. So yeah, go for it, Cameron. All right, thank you, Diego. Here we go. This is Parque de la Cruz. People of all ages come to skate, perform tricks, and have a good time. The initial development started in January of 2007 and it officially opened January 17th of 2018. Over the course of a decade, this park was created by diverse voices of City Heights, community members, and skateboarders alike. Right, we'll stop there in the uh, interest of time for any uh, uh, committee members who would be interested, we'd be happy to share uh, the playlist of the WDI uh, videos. Uh, some really powerful work to wrap up uh, for today in terms of steps forward. Uh, certainly lessons learned, uh, important lessons learned, the number of applicants we received 
uh, definitely indicates high demand for this type of programming. Uh, if we do the numbers and, and crunch the math, we actually received five applications per one spot available. So we had 30 spots available uh, and we received over 150 applications. So definitely underscoring high demand for this type of programming. Uh, we did find success in reaching target zip codes. These are uh, underserved zip codes that are uh, targeted not only by the city and the library, but by Media Arts Center uh, ourselves as an organization. So that's been really uh, helpful in reaching these communities. And then certainly in the context of uh, the pandemic, and one, one uh, theme that was very uh, prevalent in student applications was uh, we're working with a generation of young people that because of the pandemic has really missed out on those, fir those first formative work opportunities, that first job uh, out of high school or that part-time job um, working at a cafe. Uh, so really this generation um, is eager to get work experience, is eager to get work readiness training, uh, and is really primed to benefit from it. The continued context of the pandemic has made that difficult. So being able to offer this programming in a safe way, um, I think is a wonderful opportunity uh, for students. And then uh, institutionally, in terms of the collaboration, this pilot program has been a great opportunity for us and our colleagues uh, in the city and at the libraries to basically put together the infrastructure to be able to run a program like this. Um, as a pilot program, it's been uh, very successful and just uh, also uh, figuring out how to do this, how to get the students paid, how to uh, onboard them. Um, and so we're really, we really are primed to uh, be able to continue such programming. Uh, so with that said, we'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to stop my share and uh, depending on time, happy to field any questions. I can also provide uh, my contact info if anybody would care to follow up. Thank you all. Awesome. Great, great presentation. Um, just kudos. I mean, I, I can't imagine having to narrow down so many qualified applicants to 30. And as a former retired journalist, I think it's so exciting to give young people, diverse people, an opportunity um, to see the community, to create art, to tell somebody else's story. And through telling a story, you learn all sorts of things. So really, um, just how exciting and what a, a well done pilot. You know, you launch a pilot, you're wondering, is anyone going to apply? <laughs> like, are we going to have 10 people? Will anyone want to come? But um, well done. Great, great uh, presentation. Thank you so much. Um, does you. anyone have any questions? Gosh, like I want to go through the program. <laughs> Good. Well, that's really, really exciting. Kudos. And thank you, Misty. Yeah, I just wanted to comment. You know, we started this, um, this project and we, you know, Media Arts Center, we've worked with them for a long time. So when we first opened our idea lab here at the Central Library, they actually provided the training for the students and for a lot of our staff. Um, so when we uh, were working to open the Idea Lab at um, City Heights, we, you know, partnered with them and initially it was just going to be, you know, coming in and doing some classes and then we, we were able to get this funding um, for internship opportunities. I brought it forward to the city. As you know, they jumped on it, loved the idea. Uh, Media Arts pivoted so quickly <laughs> to be able to, um, to make this work um, and they've done a phenomenal job in getting these students trained um, we're getting them on board of the city and I think it's just going to be um, you know like Cameron said it really it showed that we can put together this kind of initiative and that it can be successful and it's something we can build on moving forward it's absolutely something that's in demand obviously um, and so we are uh, already identifying funding to be able to continue um, to do this um, and be able to offer this to, to more kids. So. Yeah, congratulations again. I was curious if you had a really polite, like, thank you, but no, thank you letter due to the large number of applications. You're still fabulous, but we, you know, there's just limited spots and I'm sure you had something like that, but um, how fortunate for the students that were able to go through that program. And I just love the whole richness of the diversity in the applicants and what that creates among, among those students as well. So fantastic, I love, <laughs> thank you, Misty. And thank you to all of our presenters uh, for bringing forth all of these good news and good things that are coming out of our, our libraries through our collaborations and through our staff and volunteers and project partners. 
Good stuff. Um, Misty, anything else um, or else we'll move forward to commissioner comments? Oh, that's it. Okay, thank you all for joining us. Um, is there any comment, commissioner comments? If not, I'll move forward to other business. No, okay. Well, thank you everyone for taking time out of your busy day to join us. Our next meeting is March 2nd. Um, we hope to see you there. Uh, thank you again to all of our uh, presenters for joining us and to everyone's great work. Um, it is appreciated. Um, some days are harder than others, but we're making great strides and just know that you're making a big impact in the community. So thank you. Cameron just uh, popped his uh, contact information and more information about the WDI program. All right, everyone, we will go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Nice to meet you guys. Farewell.